Welcome back. Just like the Euros, the Copa America semifinals are set. Argentina will face Canada tomorrow. And on Wednesday, Uruguay will face Colombia 8 p.m. Eastern. These are going to be so much fun. All right, let's chat a little Argentina, Canada. Tony Miola, if I told you at the start of this tournament that Canada would be playing in the semifinal and Brazil would not be, <laughs> what would you have said? You'd say, get a new job. You're crazy. <laughs> That's what I was You're nuts. <laughs> Can you imagine if, like, I should have put money on this, man. Dang. Yeah, good, good on Canada. I don't think any surprise, right, that Argentina's here, although it hasn't been in the most convincing fashion. But again, we, we, this has been a theme throughout these two tournaments. But Canada, a little bit of a surprise, right? The, the Jesse Marsh comes in. Um, there's more energy in that group. They press. It's not always the prettiest football mm -hmm. that we're watching, not but it's, it's effective. Uh, all, it's always not the prettiest. I should have rephrased that. Right? <laughs> yeah. um, it, but but um, it, it's it's effective and it puts teams under pressure. Even you go back to the Argentina game on match day one, right? Argentina was uncomfortable yeah. in that match with the way that they played. Maybe they didn't expect them to come out that way. Maybe mm -hmm. they expected like it's Canada. They're going to sit back and give us the ball and Canada didn't do that. They get a couple of uh, really good results and here they find themselves it's a massive win against a, a really good Venezuela inside. Yeah. I feel like Canada can't play against Argentina like they did against Venezuela. In fact, I think Venezuela played right into Canada's hand and making the game erratic, back and forth, high intensity. Jesse Marsh l l likes that. Thrives. I think he they, thrives. They thrive he, in that. He thrives in that. But if you give that to Argentina, if you make the game erratic to Argentina, who likes to control the ball, They'll find, they'll find spaces in behind and kill you, if either with Nico Gonzalez or if Di Maria makes an appearance, Messi's starting balls, to even take out Messi in the equation. Obviously, Argentina have enough tools to hurt you if you're going to blow the game completely out of the water. In this intent. And that's why in the first game, they were very organized. And, and that's what gave them the better of opportunities. Counter. It, it, in this, in this, this is the problem with when I see a team like Jesse Marsh's Canada side, when a manager wants their, their, the team to play so aggressive and play, when you get the lead, you can't stay playing like that. Hmm. Venezuela, there's no, absolutely no reason in hell when you're up 1-0 in the second half to have everyone forward like that. Where one ball in behind and your one-on-one -on -one was Solomon Rondon, their best player, and he just boop, boom, and then over the goalie. And you, you're thinking, you, you should have at least had two players there, at the very least. But in, in, in realistic terms, a manager would have the whole team sitting back because Venezuela is not going to beat you any other way. Right. And, and, and Venezuela had proved this Copa America that their best facet of play was on the counter. So my, when I'm looking at this matchup between Canada and Argentina, Canada showed their cards in a way because they showed, hey, we, we can hurt you in these type of ways. Alfonso Davies down the right, uh, left, whipping in balls, and I think they're going to have to be a little bit more cautious in when they do venture forward, but they can counter-press Argentina and take advantage of that. But like I've said before, I don't think you can play Kyle Aaron and Jonathan David together. Play just Jonathan David up top, and then when Jonathan David needs a break, that's when you bring in Kyle Aaron for a change of pace. But... They needed something more in midfield, and Ishmael Kone, Jesse, because he covers so much Char ground. Charlie doesn't think that you can play with two strikers, man. <laughs> yeah, here. <laughs> Make the change. <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, no, but it, huge congratulations to Jesse Marsh for getting to this far. Absolutely. Are you kidding me? But in terms of statement wins, and when he talked about discipline for the U.S. men's national team, he was talking about the U.S., he, they lack discipline on that goal against Venezuela, right? That's why it went into the penalty kicks. But um, this is your opportunity to say, hey, we beat Argentina in a Copa America semifinal. You're talking about raining, statement wins. You're talking about the yeah. biggest win in Canadian men's national team history to really give a country hope. And that was not an easy group that it, they got like, out of, by the, the way. Is the Venezuela a signature win for him? I think so. I was just going to ask that question. Good job, Tom. You, you, I, I, in all, in all honesty, I, your mind too. I, I would say, I, in all due respect to Venezuela, in all honesty, that's not a signature. It has me. to be for Canada. I, I think for the status of, of what it got to you. To get to a semifinal of a Copa America, I think that qualifies, in my humble opinion. In my Remember, home. Venezuela is what? They're fourth in Com the Bowl right now in qualifying? I think they're in fourth. Yeah, they're playing really well. 
Yeah. They've had a really strong start to qualifying. They have a wild, promising project up and running. It's not a signature win for me. Okay. But. I, I, mind you, I don't think you can call it a signature win because it's it was a one one. Right? It was a signature yeah. qualification. Qualification. If, if we win. will. They won. It's like saying it's a signature <laughs> draw for Craig so I have a question. If Bayer Leverkusen, if oh, Bayer Leverkusen no. would have won, gone to penalty kicks against Atalanta and, and, they, and, 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 and lost, they would have still been undefeated? Yeah. Oh, if they lost. If yeah. they lost in penalty no, no, kicks. They lost. They lost. Yeah. Penalty kicks part of the game. Okay. Did did Argentina win the World Cup or did they draw the World Cup? Is France did they get half the trophy because they drew? Mm. How do you do But that? it was a draw. Did, what do you say, Argentina? You just mm. said Argentina <laughs> won the World <laughs> Cup. Right? Now now he's up. Uh, yeah, now Tony, Argentina all of a sudden. Let's move along to the other semifinal. Uruguay taking on Colombia. This one's going to be really fun. Colombia absolutely thumped Panama. Did you Five say it was going to be close? Nil. Five nil. Are they are they the most informed team right now remaining? No. In this didn't you say Colombia and Panama is going to be close? I said that. Yeah. Didn't you say that? I don't remember that. <laughs> I, I told you to go thump Panama. They're they're oh, the most goal. convincing team. Oh. Lucho Diaz. They're the most convincing team in the Copa America. They have different ways to play. Yeah. Having having multiple facets in your game is a very important part to modern football. Look at Spain. Spain is one of those teams that can play in different ways. They have verticality, they have possession, and so does Colombia. Colombia can bring up the intensity, they can keep possession, they can play out of the back. The way that they were playing out of the back against Brazil, mm. and the, the way that they were pressing Brazil, Brazil couldn't put Brazil three, had zero. Three they don't have a passes midfield. together. But even out of the back, I like. When was the last time Brazil couldn't play? Play out of the back. The tone they were pressing them, and boom, they're getting rid of it. Because and Colombia has a lot, of, a lot of facets. But re regardless of the downfalls of Brazil, there's a lot of virtues yeah. that expose that in Brazil. And Colombia is convincing in that fashion, and they take care of business with with a lot of gusto. And James Rodriguez looks like. A, a, a Real Madrid starter <laughs> in terms of that ability. You see how gifted he is at controlling the tempo, and he, he, he makes the game so easy for everyone. His distribution, every time he gets on the ball, he's comfortable. He finds a, a solution. What a player. Yeah. He, he's it's almost been reborn with this Colombia side. Or whenever he shows That's up for Colombia, he, he plays. He, when he, he represents plays. his nation. He, uh, MLS, if, if I'm an the MLS scoring director, <gasps> owner, get, get me him. that player. 100%. Figure out a way. He's now in, in Brazil, he's, right? He's, he's in Sao Paulo. His, yeah. The trajectory of his club career is astonishing because it's been a pretty significant downfall. Ever since he left the elite, I'm talking about the Bayern, the, mm -hmm. the Real Madrid, he went to Qatar. Barely played and he had to leave because apparently, from what I've heard, he didn't train. Then he goes to Olympiacos, rescinded his contract after not even a year, probably six months, and then goes to Sao Paulo in Brazil and doesn't play in Sao Paulo. And I think that longer sample size, if I'm an MLS club, and I see, I guess in MLS there's a different tone to what you're expected in Brazil, but his club form hasn't been great. But I don't know how to explain it. Maybe it's the pride that he feels when he puts the national team. Well, I can tell you, there's a lot of Colombians that live in the United States. Yeah. So he will, f he, he can find a home, a second home here. If you're, in, if mm. you are trying to get a game-changing player, who will bring a lot of people to the seats mm. and, and change the dynamic he? for your team 32, going forward. 32, 31 yeah. years old. Mm -hmm. He's not even what, that old. What a player. What a player. And Gift, so gifted. Shout out also to Richard Rios in the midfield mm -hmm. alongside James. L look at how they matched up against Brazil. I think this Panama, I, I want to take this Panama game aside because they were so overwhelmingly better. And, I, and I'd like to signal virtues in, in Colombia next to a, a higher team, higher caliber team. It was three players that played in, in Brazil. John Arias, James, and Richard Rios. Just making the Premier League midfield of Bruno Guimaraes, Joao Gomez, and Paqueta neutralized. That's, that is impressive. And, and I think there's, there's a lot to pick off the bone there with the work that Nesto Lorenzo is doing because he's getting the most out of all 11 players that step onto the field for Colombia.